Hi, I'm recording this video for my GCSE electronics students, quite a few of whom this year are considering having some sort of display, whether it's numeric or maybe alphanumeric, and so you would presumably you would like to have a few ideas about uh, what the options are. So I'm going to run through a few things here. So we've got an LCD display, uh, maybe a single digit display, something like that, one of these seven segments, uh, maybe a double digit display. This one's not going to work at the moment, we'll go through why. And then multiplexing of displays, doing something like that. Uh, and then also some display drivers as well. And there's, there's other versions as well. So we're going to have a look through all of those. Uh, hopefully by the end of watching this video, you will get a good understanding of how they work. And if you find the video useful, please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up. So this first one is the most easy for you to implement. It's also the most expensive. So, uh, so long as you buy one of these LCD displays with the display driver, and by the way, they are super expensive relatively. I think they're well overpriced. Um, so, yeah, about 50 bucks. These are expert prices. So you get the display and you get the driver with it. Now, uh, if, say, you would go onto eBay because maybe you would say, oh, I can get a much cheaper somewhere else. Uh, effectively, these ones are the same displays. Now, this is 10 of them for £11.99, 89p postage, okay? So... And this is just like one of them for £15 plus that. So these ones are much more expensive because they also have the display driver. OK, so um, if you buy one of these without the display driver, no, you won't be able to get it to work with the Genie. All right. So don't think that you'll be able to shortcut it there. Now, what can you do with this? Well, it's going to be very, very easy to wire up because all you've got to do is uh, connect the power, the positive power and the ground. There's zero volts and you have one data input there and that's good because if you've got a microcontroller with a limited number of output pins but you're only using one of those pins okay by the way just in case you're not familiar with this if you haven't watched one of the videos that i've posted previously i've got a 10k resistor to the programming pin it just uh, solves a lot of issues when you first of all turn the microcontroller on and it starts up straight away we've had loads of projects in the past where microcontroller has been slow to start 10k resistor to a programming pin fixes that okay in every instance I've known um, okay so I mean that the LCD display it works uh, let's just quickly run and you'll see that you can you can do all manner of stuff to it okay uh, and you can I think you can do custom characters never actually done that myself but I believe that you can do custom characters and programming of it is really easy let's just go on to edit the flowchart and you can see we've got this this block remember these slanted boxes these are always input output and you can just type in text that you want, um, you know, different characters. We have to specify which of the output pins we want it to go to. And if you want to, you can even uh, you can have things like variables and value of sensors and things like that as well. Uh, if you want, you can have a delay between sending each character. So let's just do that and let's just go back and you'll see what happens now. It does it like that? OK, so, you know, if that's what you want, uh, but they are uh, they are relatively expensive. OK. So the next um, move would be if you wanted only to output a single digit. Now, these are seven segment displays, so you can output zero to nine. But also you can actually get um, hexadecimal zero to F if you want. So you can have zero to nine and then you can have A, B, C, D, E, F as well. Uh, if you make a connection to all of those segments to, you know, like one segment, one pin on the microcontroller, uh, then you have complete control because basically it's just like this seven LEDs, uh, eight if you in include the decimal point. So you have individual control over those. So you have to do a bit of programming work to actually uh, get the uh, correct segments to light up for the uh, correct um, digit that you want to display. By the way, I, I regard that as quite a poor layout. You'll see that what I've done here, I've not bothered to try to make the connections across. I've used these named uh, networks. OK. So I use a terminal there and I name the terminal. Now, if you're not familiar with doing that, uh, let me just show you that what we do, we just go up to connectors and then you drag a terminal in uh, like this. And then you can just name it. So uh, whatever, uh, let's say if it's like reset and then you can drag another reset. pin. And these are because they've got the same name, they are basically connected together. All right, so uh, I recommend uh, if you want to do a circuit which got lots of wiring like this, split it up. And so, for example, segment A, which is on that pin, OK, uh, that pin, let's just find out what that is. That's pin six. So segment A, 
it's effectively like this is now connected to pin 6. Okay. Um, doesn't change the circuit, it just makes it uh, easier to understand. Hopefully it is easier to understand. Now, if you do this, uh, the drawback of doing this is that you have used seven, uh, seven pins, seven output pins to drive just a single display. And that's, that's a bit of a problem uh, because you're going to have to use something like this Genie 18 because you know, some small microcontrollers aren't going to have enough output pins. Uh, also, I've made this note here. Hopefully you can notice, you'll notice that I have pulled Pin four, so we start, this is the top, remember that, that cutout. So one, two, three, four. I've pulled pin four to a logic high. Now, you might um, not be aware of why I did that, but you'll notice, hopefully you notice, that this pin has the name of D5, so uh, digital input five Qs are the outputs, Ds are the inputs, D5 slash R. Now, if we were to have a look at program settings, and look at, I think it's in advanced actually, yeah, in advanced for the Genie 18, you'll see the device will be reset when the reset or R pin goes low. Now, if you don't want the reset functionality, you can just get rid of it, in which case I wouldn't need to actually uh, have that uh, pin pulled high. But I've left that, that, I think that's the default setting actually. So if you, if the reset function of pin four is enabled and you don't want your device to keep on resetting, you must pull it logic high. Uh, you've got absolute and complete control over each one of the segments. So you can do whatever you want. I mean, if you want, you can have like, um, you can have like the, the, uh, the LEDs lighting up around in a circle, like a, an LED chaser if you want. I can't remember quite what I've programmed this one to do. Oh yeah, this one. So you could do something like that, okay? And uh, if I could have been bothered to, I could have got it to count to uh, zero to uh, F if I wanted as well, but I'm bothered to do that, okay? But you've got complete control over the segments. Now, hopefully you can see that uh, we're doing effectively the same thing here, but I've got one single digit here, and then I've just added another double digit. Now, hopefully you'll understand that this is going to be completely pointless because it's going to display well, firstly, actually, each LED is actually in parallel with each other with a single resistor. That's not a good idea, but let's not worry about it for the moment. But each display is going to display exactly the same thing. So there's, there's no advantage in that at all. All right. Now, just get me out of the way again. Now, uh, what we effectively want to do, though, if you want to display two different numbers, what would be good would be to display a number and then to quickly switch to the other set, uh, the other display and then display another number and then to switch to the other display and then show that number and then to switch and keep on doing this so quickly uh, we have something called uh, I think it's persistence vision or something so if you do this quick enough you won't actually see the flashing so you could like output or select select this one output number like one and then select the other one out with another number, maybe nine or whatever, and then select the other one and one. It looks like it's like 19 or, or whatever it is you're trying to try and show. OK, so that's the principle of it. Obviously, with a physical mechanical switch like that, that's not going to work. So let's move on to the uh, next option. Moving out the way again. So the next option then still uses microcontroller and still uh, we're still directly addressing each one of the segments. But this time I'm using a. Uh, one of the outputs, in this case Q7, to select something. And hopefully you can understand this now that we've got MOSFETs. So what we're doing, we're basically interrupting the flow of current from, this is the uh, ground pin, or the common pin, of each of these uh, seven-segment displays. And I only turn one of them off at a time. And the way I, I ensure that I only turn one of them off at a time is I've got this NOT gate here. So if, for example, I output on the select pin a logic high, I will then be turning this uh, MOSFET on. So the MOSFET will go in saturation. So that means that the current can flow through it. And then so this, this uh, display will be on, but that logic high is going to be inverted here by, by this NOT gate. So that will be a logic low. So then this one will be off. So and, and then we can and then we can change. So the select pin is basically just going to go on off on off on off. And each time we have to um, output the correct um, combination of digital outputs to actually display the numbers that we want. 
hopefully you see that um, in theory it does work and this is called multiplexing but it might be a little bit complex for some people to implement when it, especially when it comes to programming it's, it's not it's not not doable but I'll be honest with you I think that it's going to make it a bit of a challenge for some students so uh, maybe maybe one for you to decide whether you actually think you want to do this or not so my recommended solution be actually if you know, if that's too complex and if a single digit is uh, just like maybe not enough, then consider looking at a dedicated driver like the uh, CD4026 driver. Now, these are very cheap. I can't remember how much. Let's say probably something like 10p or something like that. So the driver chip is not very expensive. Got the same resistors and uh, seven second drivers before. But the benefit of this one now is that we've just got one one uh, output from our microcontroller and we're going to call that the clock uh, each time it goes to a logic high then it's going to advance the number okay so this this chip is a dedicated chip for driving uh, a seven segment display like this okay so each one of the outputs are uh, i have got these identifiers a b c d e f g well these are the segments of the seven segment top one that's a b c d e f and g is the middle one okay so uh all we need to do to say like show like the number five you're just going to need to have five pulses on the clock and then you'll display number five assuming that you start off from zero so uh I've, i think our program is to do something yeah we're, we're doing the counting here okay um and in fact what we could do we could just probe the clock just for a moment and you'll see that I've got these, uh, you will do in a moment, yeah, okay, I've got these pulses, and each time it pulses, then we've got uh, advancing of the counter. Uh, so I, I think that's quite good. Um, sometimes it's, uh, it might be the case that the, it might start, like when you power up the circuit, it might not actually start from zero, or maybe you, you're currently on a five and you want to then get to a three. So what you might want to do, you might want to reset. So you know you're starting off at uh, zero again. So to do that, the, there is a reset pin. And the reset pin is a logic high. So that means that if you take that pin high, uh, high like you know, five volts or whatever, then that's actually going to reset that um, reset counter. Uh, you'll notice that... Um, this pin here this one has a zero which means it's a you see the zero or circle this means it's a logic low so it means that this whatever this function is uh happens when it goes logic low so if you have a look i think if you hover over these pins it will show you somewhere uh clock enable yeah okay so we want to enable the clock so to enable the clock we have to pull that logic low because it's active it's when it's logic low. Uh, DE, I think, is display enable. Let's just hop over that. Yeah, display enable. So we want to enable the display. We don't want to blank it. So we're going to take that logic high. Um, if, say, for example, you wanted to show a new number and you didn't want it to be visible that it was counting one, two, three, four, five, six, although, albeit it happens extremely quickly, so you won't actually see it with a microcontroller, but you could you know, temporarily blank the display and then you could uh, re show it again. Um, some of these pins have a special function, but one of them is actually a carry pin. So when you get when you go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, well, if we were counting in decimal, then we would then we would reset that digit to zero, and then we would then carry one to to the next uh, decimal uh, to the next uh, place. Okay, so like the tens, the hundreds, the the one uh, thousands. So we can do that. Uh, we can actually cascade these things together. So let me just quickly show you this. So we're counting to nine, and then did you see that it's going to advance? And then so twenty. So these are the tens. These are the, the units there. Okay. So terrifically easy to do that. Uh, we just we just take a uh, pin. Uh, well, it's pin five. Okay. Um, pin five is just the uh, output or the the carry pin. Okay. So that's really easy to do. And you might think, well, it's going to be tedious counting to a high number. Well, it's not because with a microcontroller you can blip these uh, at an extremely fast rate. You have to check the data sheet to be sure what the speed is. But basically, um, like if, you, um, if you've got like two digits and you just want to display number 17, you're starting off from zero. No one's going to see it as it goes from zero to one to two to three, four, five, 17. Okay, it just happens like virtually instantly. So no problem at all. Um, so yeah, I mean that if you want to display uh, two digits, 
fine if you want to display more than two digits it's it's really it's a piece of cake just to add another uh, another display if you wanted to so I mean we could just do this and then you just let's just take that one and then it's that one was carry out so we just carry that one out and then you just keep on going you can then just go from next one to next one but probably let's just speed things up a little bit so let's just go to program edit flow chart and I've got a delay there if you see that so let's just change that delay to make it super quick now okay so let's just run this again uh, there we go that's this one Um, once we get to nine and then it's going to advance that one. Okay, so hopefully you can see it's, it's really ridiculously easy now If you were testing this um, In the classroom the way to test it would be to not bother even with the microcontroller The clock in can be a function generator now uh, if you're doing that in circuit wizard uh, the function generator will be uh, in test instruments and you can get yourself a function generator down there okay uh, don't forget to change it to a square wave uh, because it's just one and on off five volts that, that will match more or less what your microcontroller control output would be and then just hook that up to the clock okay um, and it's to be honest it's not much more difficult to do that in the classroom with the actual physical function generator as well they're pretty easy to use and I'm quite happy to show people how to use those okay so hopefully that's of use uh, so my recommendation if you want a recommendation would be that um, the 4026 is well worthwhile looking at okay whether you want to use a single digit or multiple digits I like the 4026 it's very easy to wire up and it uses very few pins on the microcontroller so that means you can probably save money on using a cheaper smaller microcontroller that's wiring that okay um, the multiplexing is one I would probably avoid unless you want a bit more of a challenge. It's not going to be as simple to wire up as you'd think, particularly, I mean, even this, this knock, it looks like it's just got one in, one out. Well, there's actually going to be quite a bit more wiring uh, than there is actually shown there. So don't be confused about that one. Um, if you want super simple, um, if you um, know that your skills are not uh, that hot and you want to use something as simple as possible but looks as nice as possible then go for the LCD display, the LCD display. okay so hopefully that's useful and uh, let me know in the comments or if you're one of my students just tell me in classroom okay thanks very much goodbye